everybody, this is Jason Ritchie, and I'm back with part two of my series called Movable. By the way, everybody, I'm using a Blue Moon uh, fancy acrylic comb, uh, Suzuki Manji in the key of A. I got these tie-dyed crazy colors to go with all this purple and pink I'm wearing today. <laughs> Um, that are also from Blue Moon. You just, uh, these are actually stickers you just put over. And uh, this uh, cover plate was kind of rusty. So I just slapped these suckers on there and it's like new. Licks. What are movable licks? There are licks that use the same bending and breathing patterns that you can play in multiple places. In other words, you can just move up a slot, a, a whole slot, do the same motion with your mouth and produce a similar melodic figure and an identical rhythmic figure. Okay, so, you know, we'll start off with a, an easy triplet. We're going to start on two draw, go to two draw, double bend, and then down to one draw. And then I'm going to just try to repeat that faster right so there you go so two draw two draw double bend one draw so now i'm just gonna move up and instead of starting on two draw, I'm gonna start on three draw. And I'm just gonna behave like I picked the harp up and started playing the wrong hole. I'm gonna do every motion exactly the same. Draw three, double bend three, draw two. So the same lick. Just same motion. And now a new lick on a different hole. So this one is pentatonic or blue scale. And this one could be major pentatonic. So now if I just move up to four draw, do the same motion, four draw, then bend four draw, then inhale on three. I get a very uh, an identical rhythmic figure in a similar melodic pattern. And then same goes on five. I can't really bend five, a whole step or even a half step, but I can get an inflection. And up to six. Which isn't so useful in cross harp unless you get on, or unless you're on the five chord, or if you're playing in third position, or in other positions. So in review, I just started on two, and then I double bend two draw, and then one draw. So then the motion is inhale, bend, move down a, a hole. I use my tongue to. I'm lip pursing for this technique and I use my tongue to articulate each note. So I'm making a T sound with my tongue against the roof of my mouth, right behind my two front teeth. Not necessarily on them, just like a, like a ta-ta-tum. So I can use this if I'm just playing. cool little thing now anything I do forwards I want to try to learn backwards so if this is backwards would be starting on one going up to the two draw double bend and then up to two draw so I'm gonna go move up and bend to two draw double bend and then just let off the bend and inhale on two draw I can 
just move this up by doing the same motion except starting on two draw. Move up a hold of three, double bend. And then in just inhale on three. And then start on three. Move up to four, draw. Or Again, that hold doesn't really bend, but a little inflection. And then for maybe a cool third or twelfth position leg. video I said you know these aren't things you want to necessarily string together like I'm doing I'm just doing that for demonstration that it's all the same movement <clears throat> but musically you know you, you probably don't want to put too many of these together unless you align them in the correct scale together so if you're playing major pentatonic <laughs> They'll fit, you know, or if you're playing a blues. So, you know, you gotta wanna match right uh, combinations of notes. If you're confused about how to do that, just check out some of my videos like uh, Major Pentatonic and Friends or any of the minor pentatonic videos that I have or blues scale stuff like that. Let's get a little more complicated here. Let's start on the two draw double bend. Okay, so I'm gonna go two draw double bend, two draw, and then I'm gonna land on three draw. Or I can land on three draw half step bend. Or just through draw. Now I could just take that same motion, so I'm bending, then inhaling without bending, and then moving up a hole. I could take that same motion and move it to three, so I'm bending three, then letting go, then moving up. And then I could do it on four. Again, can't really do it on five, but a little inflection. And then on seven, I could do it for like a combination blues, Dorian, and third. Or some cool fourth and fifth licks. <clears throat> also, one, one. I can start on one. Pat used to do that, actually. Like that. Yeah, on that second one, on the two draw, I like to bend the three to get keep it, you know, minor pentatonic. Or blues. You know, and then you can move these backwards. So you know, see what I'm getting at? So if you get these... And then you and then you learn them backwards. And then start stringing the forwards ones and the backwards ones, and then the third one. String these together and you start. And then just move up a hole. Move up a hole. And 
you know, and you can change out notes too. If maybe a note doesn't fit in the scale. And so you get used to playing them and you got the movement down, you can start selecting your notes more appropriately to the chords that are being presented to you. See how many there are and see I'm not doing anything different. I'm just taking the same lick and moving it. And by lick I mean motion. I'm taking the same movement. Bend, draw, draw, move up a hole, draw, move down a hole, draw. You know, whatever it is, whether it's a simple thing. or whether it's a complex figure. get the idea so it's really goes forever so there's so many different combinations you can do but uh, if you made it this far in the video what I want you to do now is just pause it and just go back to that first leg and then just try to get a couple and then move it up and then and then just go back and try to do that over and over and over again. The important thing is to get a nice rhythm. Anyway, it's uh, all movable stuff. It doesn't take a lot of theory. It just takes a little bit of practice. And uh, you'll be surprised at how many of these little things you'll be able to create on your own. Thank you guys very much for your PayPal contributions. That helps a lot, makes it a lot easier to justify taking the time to edit and upload these videos and, and all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Special thanks to all my, my Patreon patrons. That's what I was trying to say. Patreon patrons, maybe. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody that writes nice comments. Thanks to everybody that writes nasty comments that keeps uh, more that gets me more views. So every time you write something mean, it helps me out too. I appreciate it. Thanks very much, YouTube, and keep coming back. Bye bye.